Under Secretary General Malone, the Rector of the United Nations University, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to provide you with a brief video address this morning. Apologies for not being there in person, but Ben Juntz van Rensburg, our Chief of Enforcement Support, should be there with you this morning if all has gone according to plan. Today, the 3rd of March 2014, is the first time we are celebrating World Wildlife Day. The UN General Assembly adopted a resolution in December of last year proclaiming the 3rd of March, the day of adoption of CITES, as World Wildlife Day. In doing so, the General Assembly took note of one of the outcomes of the 16th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to CITES, held in Bangkok, Thailand, to designate the 3rd of March as World Wildlife Day to raise awareness of the world's wild fauna and flora. And it also recognised the important role of CITES in ensuring that international trade does not threaten the survival of species. The General Assembly also reaffirmed the intrinsic value of wildlife and its various contributions, and here I quote directly, including to ecological, genetic, social, economic, scientific, educational, cultural, recreational and aesthetic, to sustainable development and human well-being. The CITES Secretariat was requested by the General Assembly to coordinate the day in collaboration with relevant United Nations organisations, and that is something we've been doing since December of last year. There is no theme for World Wildlife Day this year, but we have identified three issues that could be highlighted. One of which is to raise awareness of the urgent need to step up the fight against wildlife crime, which has wide ranging social, economic and environmental impacts. We are delighted that the United Nations University Tokyo Conference on Combating Wildlife Crime is commencing today on World Wildlife Day. An event that will serve to raise awareness and help come up with solutions to our current challenges. The surge in wildlife crime, and in particular as it affects the African elephant and rhino, is having a devastating impact on wildlife and on people. And in some cases, it is affecting national economies and national security. We are witnessing the increasing involvement of organised criminal gangs, and in some cases, rebel militia. CITES, at its 16th meeting of the Conference of the Parties, held in Bangkok, Thailand last year, took decisive action to tackle the disturbing trends we are witnessing, and it adopted a powerful suite of decisions and resolutions to tackle illegal wildlife trade. This critical issue has also attracted the highest level political interest over the past year or so, including through the United Nations Security Council, APEC, the G8, and various heads of state and government, including from Botswana, France, Gabon, Tanzania, Thailand, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Combating wildlife crime requires us to work across the entire enforcement chain, working with police officers, customs, prosecutors and judges. And it also requires us to work across the entire illegal supply chain, that is with source, transit and destination states. It requires a collective effort, both nationally and internationally. And this is a message that was strongly reinforced at the 16th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to CITES last year. This is a critical global issue that will greatly benefit from the research and education capacity of a global think tank of the standing of the United Nations University. We thank the United Nations University for hosting this event and congratulate you on developing an excellent agenda and on attracting such high level participation. We wish you well with the event. We look forward to learning of the outcomes. And finally, we wish you a happy World Wildlife Day. I thank you.